guess what? I just got this new sensor thingy today and I have a problem. The sensor has an output voltage of 0 to 10 volts, but my Arduino can only accept up to 5 volts on an input. What can I do? Well, I have the answer, and we'll talk about voltage dividers today on this episode of... Okay, so we have a problem. We've got a sensor that puts out 10 volts and a microcontroller that can only read up to 5 volts. So how are we going to solve this problem? Well, let's draw it out and see what kind of an issue we've got. First of all, we've got a sensor here and it has outputs that will go from 0 to 10 volts and then we have a microcontroller over here microcontroller like this now the microcontroller itself has an input we're going to call it A0 and a ground and it can only accept up to 5 volts okay 5 volts if we go any more than 5 volts we will damage the microcontroller input channel and then it'll be useless for us so we need some kind of a magic box right here in between the two that we can put in 10 volts here to ground and then we can take out 5 volts from here 5 volts okay so how are we going to make this work well, first of all we'll look at it and we'll think just intuitively what's going on we have 10 volts here we want 5 volts out of there that looks like this circuit needs to be a divider and we want to divide the voltage by 2 okay we have 0 to 10 volts here 0 to 5 volts here from this sensor you know now sensors have some kind of a varying a time varying signal that'll go from 0 to 5 or 10 I'm sorry and then we want to get that same kind of signal form out of here but we want it to go from 0 to 5 so it's a divide by 2 circuit so how can we get a divide by 2 circuit well we can use a thing called a voltage divider now the voltage divider is simply two resistors in series okay so the voltage divider itself is down here it is a resistor here wired in series with another resistor goes to the end so this is R1 and this is R2 and where they come together is what we call a node and that node will have an output that we can then feed to the microcontroller obviously the top of the resistor is connected to the sensor and the bottom of the resistor is connected to the sensor ground so this is plus minus this is what we'll call V sub S and this was what we will call V sub N now this voltage divider two resistors if we look at this just at a very high level we have 10 volts here we want this to be 5 volts here okay and we get zero volts here of course since this is ground it would appear that we want to drop 5 volts across R1 and we want to drop 5 volts across R2 so if we think about this it would appear that both resistors if we had both resistors the same value that they would 
form a voltage divider where we would get half of the voltage out here that we put into it. So let's see if that's the case. So R1, let's let R1 equal to, just for the sake of ease of calculation, 1K, and let R2 equal to 1K, that's the same value. How are we going to calculate what the voltage at the node is? Well, we're going to apply Ohm's law, Ohm's law twice, okay? And Ohm's law says that the voltage drop is equal to the current times the resistance. V is equal to IR. It's a proportion. You put a pressure across two resistors, you get current through them, and the current is proportional to the resistance. So where is this current? Well, the current comes out of the sensor and flows through both resistors and then winds up back into the bottom of the sensor. So this is our current, and that's the circuit, that's the path that it takes. Now, how do we find out what this current is? We can solve Ohm's law for I by dividing both sides of the equation by R. So I is equal to V divided by R, which is pretty straightforward. Now, voltage is the 10 volts from top to bottom because it's about across both of the resistors. So that voltage is 10 volts. 10 volts. And the resistance. Well, is it R1? Is it R2? Or both? Or what? Well, since this is a series circuit, the same current goes through both components. That's just the way that it has to be. In order to get from the plus through the resistances to the minus, it has to go through the both resistors, and it's the same magnitude current. Okay? So the resistance that it goes through is R1 plus R2. So it'll be R1. Let's just write it out so that you can see R1 plus R2, which is equal to 10 divided by 1,000 plus 1,000 is 2,000. So that's 2K. So if I divide 10 by 2,000, I get 0 0.005, which is 5 milliamps. So that's the magnitude of the current flowing through the two resistors. That's okay, but that still doesn't get us exactly where we want to go. What we want to find out is, is these, or is a combination of these two resistors going to give us 5 volts at V sub N? So how can we find that out? Well, we can use Ohm's law again. We can say that V sub N, okay, is really the voltage across R2. The voltage drop across R2, and I'll just write that as V sub R2, okay, but how do we know what that is? Well, it's going to be I times R2. It's the current through this resistor times the resistor. That'll be the voltage that's across it. All right, well, we already know the current. We just figured that out, 5 milliamps. And we've assumed a value for R2, which is 1,000 ohms, or 1K. So this voltage then would be 5 volts. All right, so that's V sub N. Write that a little bit better. V sub N right there. All right, so let's see if this actually does what we think it's going to do, okay? So let's go and check our circuit. I have a circuit here that is been put on a proto board. The circuit is two resistors. We have a resistor here, R1, which is 1,000 ohms, and a resistor in this circuit, which is R2, which is also 1,000 ohms. So let's check some values. Now, the red wire brings in 10 volts, 
And this bare wire here at the bottom actually goes out through an ammeter and then goes back to ground. So if we want to draw that ammeter in on our circuit, the ammeter would actually be right here in our circuit. This is our ammeter and it's measuring the current. Now the black digital multimeter here is reading the current 5.09 or 5.1 milliamps. So you can see that we are actually getting the current that we calculated we should get. Now let's try and see what the voltages are in the circuit. If I measure the voltage drop across both resistors, just to find out if we've got it connected to 10 volts, you can see that on the yellow digital voltmeter, we're actually reading 10.1 volts, which is pretty close to what we're supposed to be. So now here's the truth. Here's the telling part. Let's check the voltage at the node between the two resistors. And you see that it is 5.04 volts. So we're there. We've actually got results that match what we're supposed to read. Our actual is 5.04. And that's because we're actually getting 10.1 volts actual. Okay. So doing this, using Ohm's law, we've already proved that our solution will work. So in this case, we're fine. But what are we going to do in the general case? What if we don't have 10 volts? What if we have 15 or 20? Well, let's see in a minute what's going on there. All right, so if we want to generalize this now so that we can use it for any sensor or any kind of an analog input voltage range that is greater than the 5 volts, we're going to have to do a little bit math, but we can do this without too much trouble. So I've redrawn the circuit here. We've got R1 and R2. This is our voltage divider. And we have some value of voltage there out of our sensor. But we still want to get 5 volts out of the V node. We still need to get 5 volts or we're going to have problems with our microcontroller. So how can we do this now and make it work for any case? There's a relationship that was derived using Ohm's law and it's called the voltage divider rule. The voltage divider rule. And now that the relationship for that, and I'm sorry for the algebra, V sub n is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 times the voltage from the sensor, V sub s. Now this looks like it's really involved, but it's not too bad for us because there's certain things that we know and that we're going to assume that will make it really easy for us to work for any sensor. First of all, we all already know that V node is supposed to be 5 volts. And we can assume a value for R1 and R2. And we're going to know what the value for our sensor voltage is, simply because when we buy the sensor, it will tell us what the output voltage is. So just to take some value that's a little bit different than 10, Let's for the moment presume that our sensor will put out 12 volts. And we want to find R1 and R2 to make our magic divider to get 5 volts out of that. Well, that won't be too bad for us to do. We can solve this for R1, okay, and solve this equation for R1. And if I do that, R1 is equal to R2 times V sub S, which is our sensor voltage, minus our node voltage, V sub N, divided by V sub N. And that's using this equation and solving for R1. There's steps in there. I could show you what they are, but it's ir irrelevant for us at the moment. So... 
let's put in some information that we know and see where we are. R1 is equal to R2. We still don't know what R1 and R2 are, but we know V sub S. We just bought the sensor and it's 12 volts. We know what V node has got to be. That's the 5 volts or we'll burn out our microcontroller. Okay, and then once again, V node's down at the bottom. So that's 5 volts again. So R1 in this case will be equal to R2 times 12 minus 5 is 7 divided by 5 or R2 times 1.4. So really that says that our relationship between the two resistors R1 to R2 and we could write it this way, R1 divided by R2 has got to be equal to 1.4. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we have to assume a value for something. Okay, so let's let, for sake of cal ease of calculation, let's set R2 equal to 1.4. Okay, so let R2 is equal to, I'm sorry, it's not 1.4, it's 1,000 ohms. 1,000 ohms, just to make life easy to calculate. So finding a value for R1 then, it's going to be 1,000 times 1.4, not 1.9, it's 1.4, 1 1.4, like that, and that will be equal to 1,400 ohms. I don't know why it likes to fill in that 1400 ohms or 1.4k. Now they don't make a 1.4k. I'm sorry. They do make a 1.5k. So the closest standard value is 1.5k. So we'll use that 1.5k. That's the closest standard value. So R1, if we make R1 up here, 1.5K, and then R2 down here to be the 1K, with 12 volts there, we should get 5 volts, or close to it, out of the combination of these two resistors. So is that true? Well, what I've done is change the circuit you didn't see me do it, but I did it. Right here is now a 1.5K resistor, and you can see the color bands on it. It's brown, green, red. Okay, so it's 1.5K. Now, if we measure the voltage across both resistors, I've upped that to as close as 5, or close to 12 volt as my power supply will get, which is 11.47 volts. Okay, and let's see what the, between the two of them it is. It's 4.60. So, our real values, instead of 12 volts, we had 11.47. And instead of 5, we had 4.6. So, we had less volts that's not 12.97, that's 11.97, or 4.7, 11.47, and 4.6 volts. That's pretty close. We notice that the sensor is not ideal, so we should take that into account. And we're not getting exactly 5 volts out, but we can compensate for that in our analog input on the microcontroller when we do the programming. But for right now, you can see that with these values, we get in the range of where we need to be to make this sensor work with our microcontroller. So we've got now a plan and ways of calculating any circuit to interface to our microcontroller 
as long as the output voltage is greater than 5 volts, if we have less than 5 volts, then we cannot use this circuit at all. Because we're now talking about a voltage divider, we'll be talking about a voltage multiplier. And that we will talk about in a later episode. So for right now, we're in good shape. I can connect up my sensor and I'm off and running.